Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Good morning, everybody. Checking in from the road, looking at the Canadian MJ sector. So we had a week where the S&P 500, for the most part, saw a pretty decent bounce. We're still waiting for a daily trend change to confirm that the weekly higher low has been established and that the weekly uptrend is going to remain intact. So that's something we're keeping an eye on. But the Canadian MJ sector, in many instances, still showed a bit of weakness compared to SPY when it was bouncing. And we're still watching the sector leader. And in my opinion, as long as CGC is continuing to show weakness, it's going to be a scenario where individual names can show some strength, absolutely. But the ideal scenario for a bull in the Canadian MJ sector is when SPY is going up and when CGC, the sector leader, is going up as well. That really sparks the momentum for those bulls. And we don't have that scenario with CGC. I mentioned in the past how the shift of traders is potentially going towards cryptocurrency. And just another note on that, the Canadian MJ or the MJ videos in general are down about 40% in views and the cryptocurrency videos are up about 80% in views just in the last week or two. So clearly seeing the speculation of that shift of traders show up in those metrics as well. So CGC, we're watching the potential of this being a bear flag on the daily time frame, And that's still easily the case at this point. If we see a bear break of 44.19 and 43.69, then we're looking at this gap fill. And I'd like to see this gap fill as a potential for me to get interested. As I said in a recent video, I would like to see that gap fill. The daily RSI would be down in the 30s and we'd be looking for the weekly higher low compared to 39.66. So it's something I'm keeping an eye on. Looking at the shorter term timeframes, the four hour RSI would potentially be oversold if we filled that gap in the near term and the hourly would as well. So for the bulls to shift any momentum and show us any kind of strength, it's a break of 46. After the double top of 45.95, we can easily say that's the line in the sand where if the bulls cannot break that level, we're not gonna see much follow through on any bullish moves. Checking in on Cron. So Cron see this, seeing the rejection from the exponential resistance. And I was watching the four hour pattern in a recent video here as well. And the most important support level for me was down at 1472. And that is still holding at this point. And why that is the most important is because we have this tightening range with a clear wall of resistance in the, at this point we've rejected from 1530s to 1560s a bunch of times, but we still have this higher low pattern and we didn't really have a clearly higher low set on Thursday. So I'm not considering either of those levels an important support. This was a clear support. The bulls attempted continuation rejected. And now we're looking for another clear support. So 1472 is an important level to be watching for Monday. And actually Monday is closed. Actually, nope, we'll be trading in the U.S. So that's an important factor as well. Monday is closed for Canada. The names will be trading in the U.S. And I did make a bit of a strategy based around that when we get to OGI here in just a moment. But as far as Cron goes, if we break 1472, we zoom out to the daily chart and we look at our recent low down at 1390. That's where my stop loss is for current position. And at this point, it is a bear flag as well. Same as CGC. CGC looks a little bit weaker, but we're in the same boat. So watching to see if they confirm because the bears have the upper hand at this point. The burden of proof is on the bulls and they have not done a good job in the past two, three weeks of proving anything. When's the last time Cron had two green days in a row? Two meaningful green days in a row? It's been a long time. A long time. Months. I didn't know it's been that long a time, but it's been months. ACB has had a significant bull move over the past week in reaction to earnings. We did get a resistance break over this 894 level, but we topped out. It's clearly a temporary top being set with the bearish reversal candlestick on the daily time frame. Have we lost the hourly uptrend? The answer is yes in extended hours by breaking 869. We also broke it at the end of the day. Bear volume spike. So now that tells us we lost the hourly uptrend. So we look for the daily higher low to form. The sooner the bulls form that daily higher low, the better the odds for continuation. Keeping in mind, we have not changed the daily trend. We need the higher low and higher high to change that daily trend. First support's gonna be 852, and then we'll look down towards eight psychological, but ideal scenario would be for the bulls to hold the mid $8 range and try and make it back up to the recent high. Looking at on the weekly time frame, it's a bullish reversal candlestick, but we need the trend change confirmation to believe 
The Bulls have follow through. APHA has not broken my range, but again, just like our other names, we're rejecting from the exponential resistance on the daily time frame. We've stayed within this range for the last bunch of days, 10 days in a row now, and we're heading down towards support. Support is 668 and 661, and those levels are in play. For the Bulls to prove anything, have to break 722, and without doing that, it means nothing. So we have some clear guides of these exponential moving averages on the daily time frame, along with the price levels, just as a nice visual. And clearly, the bulls are struggling at those levels. TLRY, looks like we have the tightening range on the hourly time frame break bearish. So we watched that from the last video. So we're down testing the recent low. So support is going to be down at 4501 and 4431. The bulls got no follow through. We had the low of the pullback, high of the bounce, higher low, lower high. And we're coming up to test 4501 support. We could stay in this tightening range on Monday or Tuesday. Nope, we'll trade Monday. And we have to hold that level to stay in this pattern. And if we don't, then the bears are back in complete control. Anything under 5048 is just a daily lower high. So the Canadian tickers are closed on Monday. The U.S. tickers will be trading. In the past, that has provided a bit of opportunity for OGI. We're in blue sky breakout scenario. So I swung a trade that I entered at the end of the day on Thursday that I was talking about with OGI. And the way that I play protective and conservative. So I talk about the difference between playing conservative, which is my current style, and aggressive, which is how I used to trade before accruing a good bit of capital that I want to hold on to. And the difference in this scenario is I would have held on and looked for blue sky breakout follow through on Friday. Instead, what I did was take half of my position as profit on the gap up open, and that just keeps me very protective. I'm never going to go broke by taking profit. So exiting half that position and leaving half a position, that's my anti-FOMO. It protects me. It allows me to keep that position if we see strength through the morning, which we did. So I was still profiting, not as much as had I held the entire position. But if there was any downside risk of some profit taking, I was going to mitigate that risk. So I did end up <clears throat> re-adding and a little bit higher. Now, why would I want to rebuy and hire? The reason is I saw the all clear signal from the bulls. They held on just fine. We got the hourly consolidation midday as we were anticipating. I entered on that consolidation at a higher price. And the reason I am in this position further now is because I want a position on Monday. The scenario is we have the up listing on Tuesday where OGRMF is going to trade as OGI on the higher exchanges. So I feel that on Monday with only OGRMF trading and knowing that it's thinly traded, especially when OGI is not being traded on the other side of things, if what's the, the most likely scenario? That the bulls keep buying into the uplisting the next day? Or is the most likely scenario that we see people sell the OTC ticker before the uplisting? And in my opinion, it's more likely that the bulls are going to be able to hold on at least until the actual uplisting day. Yes, we are extended on the daily time frame. We just went from $9 up to pretty much a 20% move in the last six days. So that's something I'm aware of. And I do expect some profit taking once we are actually uplisting. But what I'm looking for is a little bit more green on Monday for the US ticker. So I am comfortably, and that's another reason why I was comfortable re-adding at a higher price is because the other half of my position was very comfortably profitable. So there wasn't much of a risk of going red on the trade with my afternoon addition. Didn't close as strong as the bulls would have hoped. We did have a bit of a sell-off. We hit that new all-time high right leading up into the end of the day, but then that sell-off occurred and some profit taking heading into the weekend. So short-term support is 1070, but again, we're gonna have to be going off of the US levels, and this is gonna make charting a little bit tricky next week because the US tickers are going to have more data and more information for us than the Canadian tickers are. So we're looking at support on the US ticker down at 797, let's see here. Actually, the most important support for me is the low of consolidation, that's 795, and the bulls wanna see a break of 814 to try and get some follow through to new all time highs. So when we do lose the hourly uptrend on OGI, we're going to just look for a daily higher low to form. The bulls have full control. This is one of the strongest charts out of the Canadian MJ sector. And that is why I have a position. Otherwise, I am mostly cash in this sector. But because OGI is so strong, I like that momentum. Looks like all my charts broke. 
So picking up with Hexo, this is the kind of trade where we establish a game plan based off of support. We know on the initial bounce that we had from 654 up to 740, that's a very significant bounce. That's a 14, 15% bounce in just a few days. And you might look at that and feel FOMO and want to get in bullish. But looking at the longer term perspective, we know that, that's, that on this bounce, we're just going to form a lower high. And to change the trend with conviction, we have to see a higher low and higher high. So if you miss the initial move, the play is then to wait for that consolidation and try and see if the bulls can get that follow through. So knowing that it's a very similar setup to CGC and knowing CGC has some decent odds of confirming its bear flag, we have to be cautious on Hexo. But it's the kind of scenario where at this point, the must hold level is down at 654. The current price is 688. So the risk here is about 5%. If you entered at 688 and your stop is below 654, that's about a 5% risk. Still a little too much for me. I'd like to see the price closer to that support level. And I'd like to see hourly oversold conditions to get there. So if we were to see another leg down on Monday and we were to drop and break 680, the hourly RSI gets oversold. We approach key support down at 654. Perhaps we make an entry in the 660s looking for that potential hold of support. Of course, it depends on what SPY and what the sector is doing as well, but that's just a rough outline of how I establish a trade game plan using multiple time frames, using the RSI level on a shorter term time frame, the support level on a longer term time frame. The bulls would have to hold that low and turn around and break 740 to change the daily trend to tell us that our weekly higher low has been established because if we drop down to a lower low, we're still clearly in a daily downtrend at that point. So the bulls have proving to do to shift this momentum and we'll see if there's a potential setup for an hourly oversold bounce off of 654 support. TRST, still weak inside bars breaking bearish, closing near the low of the day, not a volume spike. So again, if we want to see a clear break of a tightening range and believe in the follow through, we need a volume spike associated with it. But we're on the verge of looking for a break of eight, make that 795 with a little gap to fill at 790. And the bears are still in absolute control of this weekly time frame. So the potential of further downside is still there. If we were to fill the gap, 740 is our key support level. Same deal though. The hourly RSI, if we were to drop down another 40, 50 cents, we're going to see this hourly RSI get close to oversold. And it'll be the potential play of an oversold hourly bounce based off of 740 support. If you're playing counter the trend, the two scenarios on how to, to hold are to ideally set a stop at break even and hope the bulls can change that trend and then there's big reward on that trade or just play the hourly oversold bounce lock in a couple percent and leave it at that and then you take a step back and reevaluate and wait for some more clarity so similar setups for trst and hexo as far as plays off of support but keeping in mind the biggest difference between the two would be hexos in a weekly uptrend and trst is in a weekly downtrend so that would make me choose hexo every time over trst for looking for a bounce because I want as many time frames in my favor as possible. BGW, that, not, uh, that 490 level was resistance. We have not broken it yet, but we're still marching with a higher low every day, six days in a row. If we see a bear break of 460, the low of Friday, that means our lower high has been set at 475 and we look to pull back and then form a higher low in this tightening range. And again, condensing it down to the two day time frame makes it nice, tight and clear and it all depends if we break that pattern of a higher low every day as to whether or not our daily lower high has been set. Either way, the size of the bounce at this point gives us information. If I'm looking at an equilibrium setup and the bulls only make their way up to 450, it's a much different scenario than if they make it up to 475. Because if we go to 450, it's anybody's game. We're in the middle of the range and we could see a pullback and then a bear break. But the bulls have a lot more space to work with now. The fact that we made it all the way up to 475 at this point and potentially have not even topped out just yet. Oils on the daily time frame is also forming a tightening range. So there's the top being set here because we have a higher low every day, five days in a row, and that pattern's now broken. So the shift is there as far as seeing the high, low. Now we have our lower high set at 72 and the bulls need a higher low to form compared to 55. Declining volume is the pattern that is associated with tightening ranges, no red flags on the volume and a potential play off of 55 support sometime on Tuesday or Wednesday as we look for that higher low to form. Labs, still holding on just fine. We have a tightening range on the shorter term timeframes. Looking at it on the four hour, there's not a ton of clarity in here, but I would say the most important levels, we can pick out our clear levels, we have some higher lows, 670, 7, make that 690. 
So 690 and 670 are the most important support levels for me. Most important resistance is 714, 729, and 739. So the ranges are tightening up. If we get a bear break, and actually we've already started some consolidation on the daily, and we're looking for a higher low to form, there is a gap down at 662 to be aware of, but it all depends on whether those support levels break or not. If we break 690 and 670, then some more significant daily consolidation will be underway, as opposed to if those levels hold. But all in all, this is another name where looking at the sector as a whole, holding up very well, coming off the all-time high, low bear volume, and bulls looking to maintain the daily uptrend. VFF finally topping out as well, broke the low of Thursday. So we have a gap to fill at 1321 that has not filled yet, but that's something we're going to be watching. And again, a reminder that we had seen six green days in a row, a higher low every day in a row for five days, and a very significant 40% move essentially. So this is healthy consolidation that should be expected after that kind of move. The hourly uptrend was lost, giving a bit of a red flag, and really breaking uh, the low of Thursday was the signal that we have likely topped out for now. That being said, we have resistance of 1365 to be watching, and we know that when the bulls change the hourly trend back in their favor, that's our daily higher low forming. So this is a scenario where if the bulls were able to change that hourly trend Monday or Tuesday, and I keep mixing up days because I'm looking at the ticker and knowing which tickers have you know a, a nice volume US ticker to be watching, like VFF, but if we change that hourly trend Monday or Tuesday, we're going to be looking for a potential daily bull flag. We have to see how Monday goes because we closed week down at the low of the day, but we are just looking for a daily higher low here as well. So there are some individual names that we're just looking for a daily higher low to form, and there's a lot of individual names where we're heading down to test key support. So distinct differences between the two. T God is one of the names that's strong, or I should say, that is not strong on the daily. It is weak. Anything under 405 proves nothing, keeps the bears in control, and we're fading back down towards our only nearby support level of 374. The bears are in control of T-God unless the bulls can change the daily trend, and that's not happening anytime soon. The bulls still have a lot of work to see that happen. CXXI is one of these names that just had a pump and has faded significantly, and unfortunately, I know there's a lot of people stuck in positions that followed that pump and hype and euphoria. Why not? There were huge gains to the upside, 60% in just, oh, a few weeks. But now we've given back a huge amount here. At this point, we've pulled back 50% of the entire move. So looking at that on the longer term perspective, I'm still looking for a monthly equilibrium to form here, where we have our all-time high, all-time low, lower high, and the bulls are looking for a higher low to form compared to 62 cents. Looking at on the weekly time frame, we've now seen seven red weeks in a row. And this is the kind of scenario where knowing it's a penny stock makes me more cautious. If you give me this kind of pattern and you give it to me with a very liquid name and a lot of volume and a lot of price history and all that good stuff, then I'd be looking for a bull entry at this point. But knowing it's a penny stock and knowing that I have not read the financials and not being fully aware of what the situation is with regards to dilution, that definitely would make me pump the brakes and make me have to do some additional research if I were going to be looking to make that kind of play. But seeing how clear this downtrend is on the daily time frame, it almost just makes me default to saying, all right, well, that's a very clear pattern. And regardless of whether or not we're looking for that monthly high or low, I can just patiently wait for that daily trend to change. And yes, I won't nail the bottom, but I will have momentum in my back if I wait for that daily trend to change. So there's a gap to fill at 126. And at this point, we haven't filled it yet, but 126 is a gap. And then we're looking down at 107 as the next support level. New resistance on the daily, anything under 145 is just a lower high, keeping the bears in full control. NRTH got licensed news after hours. I haven't been following the fundamentals of NRTH, but we had a ton of people in the chat room who were very excited after hours on Friday, holding their positions and looking for this license. So the most important levels, very clearly, we have to see a 20% reaction for the bulls, and we'll get a lot of information on Monday and Tuesday. Actually, don't even know if we have a very liquid ticker to be watching on the US side of things. And it's probably pretty illiquid. So when I look at liquidity, I just pull up this chart real quick and I look at the price range and I say, okay, midway point, about 80 cents, 20 day average volume, 120K, less than a million dollars average daily volume on the US side of things. But it's all about that 120 level, 122. If the bulls can get over that, we'll continue this bull move with our higher lows and higher highs continuing. And we can assume it's going to at least be an initial bull reaction. That means our new support will be 99 cents. 
That's our must hold level. And if the bulls can get over 122, we zoom out to the weekly chart and that makes them a lot more comfortable because right now this looks like a bear flag on the weekly, significant pullback, fairly weak bounce attempt. And without any kind of news catalyst, the potential to roll over to a lower low was there. But if we can break 122, that's going to put us in the middle of this range from 169 down to 85 cents. This big pullback was about an 84 cent pullback and looking at a bounce doing some rough math, the midway point would be in the upper 120s. So bulls want to get back to the middle of an equilibrium here and break 122. That's the target for the bulls to be really successful and for this to be a really bullish reaction to news, got to break 122. KHRN, still holding on pretty well. We did break the pattern of a higher low each day, but the bulls bought that dip. So that's an interesting shift there where we would anticipate daily consolidation to take place, but not really getting that sign at the end of the day. Again, the weekly chart is clarity for me. The daily chart is chop. So we've got our low, high, higher low, and we're scouting a lower high compared to 375. Did we lose the hourly uptrend to see that bear? And we did. So it's an interesting scenario. The end of the day, bull volume here saved it from being a, a weaker close. And it's the kind of same scenario as VFF and these other names that have been strong with a daily higher low each day. And other names that we have looked at have shown us weak closes to look for our lower highs to be set. But this end of the day bull move on KHRN is keeping it strong. So if the bulls can break and continue this move over 336, that would be very notable. And that would have us continue looking for the lower high, but it would begin to favor the bulls on this chart. The more space we get before we form that lower high, the more follow through, the better the odds that this pattern can potentially eventually break bullish. So that's where we stand on Canadian MJ. I think I'm going to do the USMJ video right now afterwards. If not, I'll do it later tonight. I appreciate you watching and we'll see how next week goes. Have a good rest of your weekend.